All right, welcome to video five, part two. I had a few more things. I can only um, film, record, screen record 15 minute videos at a time. Uh, so I got a few more. All right, next we have the coin throwing chest, or actually the diamond throwing chest. So let's see what we got here. So you'd want to, you know, do new sprite, or whatever you want to admit. I just have chests. So I'm going to click on the edit. Physics I've got is solid. Um, behaviors. All right, got the always trigger proximity. So as you can see, the proximity circle. I've got it set for 333. You can change the distance. Output closest object found. I've got that to enabled. X to true, Y to true. Now I've got that enabled coming all the way down. I've got a randomizer. I've got the minimum value set to zero, max set to 400. And then I have these. I've got four uh, filters and then four emitters. Okay. And I've got this out going to each of the in. The first one I have equal to 200. And then pass to the emitter. I have a. Uh, uh, this says diamond emitter because I have an object that I've named diamond emitter and I'll show you that here in a second And I've got one that says equal to 100 emit diamond emitter equal to 300 400 so you got the one two three four for the randomizer and then that's when it'll emit you know randomly where um, I got rotate objects expire 27 and then the angle is at 144 all right, for this one, I have the angle at 33 expires. So I have these set. So these different emitters will randomize the angle, the length, and that's what the point. So you can play with that. How, like, how far do you want it to go? How fast? And then where? That's what the, that's what these three are. Expire after is the length. Force is how fast. And angle is up, down, you know, left, right, whatever angle. All right, and I have this one 2012 uh, 63, and I've got this one 28 44. So that it will look like, let me get my dog up here. And you can see that it's shooting randomly. And if you'll see whenever I collect, I can collect it up here. Um, let's go back to my library. So these are just my regular diamonds. And now I have another diamond. I have it renamed diamond emitter specific for that one. Physics, I have movable, solid, affected by gravity. I've got a little extra density, bounce, and friction, 50, 54, 50. So you saw whenever that diamond hit, it did a little bouncing. Going to the behaviors, always, timer to the 30th, and then destroy. Um, I have the doggy, so whenever it touches the doggy, it will destroy, it will disappear. And I think... Because you guys, you have to forgive me. I did this last year, so let me move the dog back down before I forget. And I believe you have to go back into the dog, into your main character, and then you have to add that. You have to add the diamond emitter diamond so that it will add to your overall. So like how we added um, the coins, and it, it added to your overall score. You would then just go back and do the same thing. Like so, whenever I have, whenever I collect my diamonds, and then everything else is already set with your coins. So all you have to do is just do a collision trigger diamond, and then add that to the plus sign, and it'll add points. So let me say that again. If you want to add add points to your overall score, and you already have it set up with your coins. Um, all you have to do is do a collision trigger with and then switch that to whatever you whatever new object you created so mine was the diamond emitter and everything else is already set up as you see right here you see how I'm just gonna move you see how it's set up to my diamond 
and I have all that there, the label, the filter, et cetera, et cetera. While I'm here, um, what you'll see is I added a filter and that says equal to 500. So whenever I have accumulated 500 points and I have some of these things like these little uh, um, uh, crystals are worth more than one. Um, if you can get to 500, you'll go to the next level. So you do that by doing filter equal to 500 and then you do next level on I believe it's game flow load level and they've just done an update so some of these are going to look a little differently um, and so what you do is pick a level and that mine's the next level or it does it automatically so that's that's how you easily do the equal to 500 or if you wanted to just do 50 and that's how they can beat the game you know you always want to have a purpose to your game okay and again I know I'm going through these quickly um, but this is kind of the advanced level so I'm just showing you different options and you can always press pause on the video um, I'm gonna challenge my students to maybe choose three of the things in these two videos to add um, elements to add to their game and then hopefully that'll spawn creativity and then they can take that and create something on their own uh, so that's going to be kind of the, the goal and mission for those who had my class last year and are in class this year. So for the last thing, um, I'm going to show you these, I call them Goombas. These are my, uh, these are my villains. Physics, movable, solid, affected by gravity. Behaviors. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, I believe in the other videos I've shown you how to do the animation walk. Uh, always number four velocity going forward and then co whenever it collides with anything so see how this Goomba is walking back and forth it'll flip you do that by doing the toggle um, collision and doggy destroy um, sound effects so whenever my uh, whenever the dog jumps on the top it'll make my Goomba disappear similar to in Mario whenever they jump on uh, the, the turtle, well, not so much the turtle because that goes back and forth. Type uh, jumps on the little brown goombas, uh, they'll disappear. And then also I have collision sound effects. So anytime collides with it, you can hear like, oh, you know. Uh, going back to the main sprite. So going back to my dog. Going to the behaviors. Let's see where is oh there it is. So I have whenever you collide with the Goomba just left or right not top or bottom make sure to unclick the top because you have you want to have that unclick so that if you jump on top of the Goomba you will uh, destroy it you'll make it disappear however if that Goomba hits you or if you touch that Goomba on the left or right get a randomizer I just have it max 0 through 10 and you need to reposition it so I have the outgoing X Y and on the position, this is very important, make sure you switch it to grid, okay? Because uh, if you use pixels, I believe sometimes it can put you off map. So make sure you do it to grid. I just have a 0 to 10. Uh, you can change that uh, to, you know, to have it go really far. I just kind of have it to where it's, um, you know, you kind of be uh, repositioned in this kind of area. It just adds a nice little um, frustrating element, uh, uh, fun frustrating element for the player. Um, I believe that's it. I just had 10 uh, quick things to show you that after some playing around. I also created a, uh, a kind of uh, a boat game, a tugboat game uh, that I'm going to be doing a, a video series uh, for the next next level uh, gaming. And um, I've created, I've created a few games actually, but the tugboat one is going to be the next series. So if you're looking to do a different style of game, uh, where you're, where the player has to figure out how to get past each board. It's simple but complex. I think you'll enjoy that. Thanks for watching.